you are my brother and my friend and someone I can talk to about most things. Not all things, but most things. I think I was the extremes. I was either the stupid, silly uncle that made you laugh, chased you around and read to you, or I was the one that was wheeled out when you were in trouble. My name is Harvey. I'm your best mate for the past, say, about six, five, six years now. Yeah. I'm your mum. Yeah. That do you? Yeah. Okay, describe me in three words, go. Creative. Caring. Caring. Just hilarious. Funny. Angry. Sensitive. Emotional. Overthinker. Cute, because when you were little, Joe, oh, you were just such a cutie. Definitely relatable. And an overthinker. If I've got music on, often I can't concentrate on anything else. Mm. I just can't do it because the music completely takes over my brain. Um, even if I'm studying and I get the faintest melody in my head. You struggle with concentration and focus. I think school wasn't your favourite thing in the world. That's it, it's game over. I've, I've got a guitar next to me. I'm not doing the work anymore. Because you enjoyed it, you did it. Because you could do it, you did it. I think a lot of us could sort of handle it more, whether we would sort of question it. Like, why are we here? Because you don't focus very long on one thing. At all. You were never the class clown, but you were always the one to make people laugh. Never trying to, like, force it or you know, disrupt the class, but it was just out of your own personality. But in the lessons that we didn't really like, we didn't see the point, we both had that relatability where we just didn't see what we were doing was worth our time, so. But it was those Lego stop motions where it really leapt forward. I feel like my creative endeavours started off with when I created my YouTube channel. Your famous YouTube channel. Do you remember that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and that was stop motion animation. And he had a real patience to, to get it right and do it again and just take all the stages. Because that was methodical and it was a process that you had to follow to do something. You're very good at it because you are methodical and you like to see something through to the end. Because everyone as a kid wanted to be a YouTuber, didn't they, really, like, realistically. And you were just so excited that you'd hit 50 subscribers. Thanks, guys. Thanks for showing faith in me. But yeah, I was really proud of you for that because it took a lot of time, effort, and you are a very creative person. Yeah, we can. So I thought I didn't expect it to be like it was. You did. You did have a very like professional outlook of it, and I thought that was like good. But then again, I kind of expected that from you. You do. When it comes to something that you like doing, you definitely sort of like switch on. And then you like you take it seriously and you, you get stuff done and you are quite hard working in that sense. We used to go there with our two cousins and we would try and find enemies. Like that was our goal. I we'd go we'd go kids. there to, to be people for no reason. But ants in your pants was just well, hell on earth, to be honest. You'd all disappear and then you'd come back saying that like the bigger boys were being mean to you and you were you were having a war. You always talked about we're having a war, the enemies, the enemies, they're over there. Us and our cousins, we were like trying to rival all the other gangs and the other cousins that, that were there. Do you think we were just trying to prove that we were the best cousins? No, I think we just found it fun. <laughs> I think, yeah, like that, I'm not being funny, we would go there and that would be the goal. Yeah. It sounds so end. weird, but sometimes you would play a really nasty game and be, and would be like, let's all run away from, is he? I know, I remember that. I thought it was quite funny. Um, I think you were actually quite scared of her, which is valid. As soon as you guys decided that other children were your enemy, you all pulled together. Every single time. All of a sudden, Izzy was back in the crew and Matthew was back in the crew. Sounds horrendous. You used to pay to go there. This is what I would do when I have kids. You know, when you go around the campfire and you're camping. Yeah. And Uncle Mark used to tell us all these little stories of where, where he's lived, where he's been and all that. I loved that. And in the five to six minutes <laughs> that I wasn't there, you had A, done a poo. One of you had climbed up the armrest of the cream sofa along, the and then the two of you were just quite happily playing along. 
That was lovely. I was going to go and watch my rugby club. We're in a final. And I said, oh, the boys would like to come and watch because I was trying to brainwash you into rugby and not football. And anyway, while we're waiting for Granddad to turn up with a toolkit, you decided to just vomit out the back of the of the Land Rover everywhere. It turns out you'd actually got chicken pox and we didn't know yet. I said, how would you describe our childhood? And she said, traumatising. But she said, at the same time, I feel like if you've never, if you've, if you're not a little bit traumatised, you're a bit bland. I think your mum and your dad went through some stuff, you know, that you would have been kind of aware of as a kid. It was a bit chaotic. There was a lot of changes. That would have been really hard at any age. We've got each other's backs. We have consistently, all three of us, got each other's backs when it counts. And we know that if we need each other, we're all there for each other. I don't think some families are like that. When push comes to shove, you and Izzy do actually stick up for each other. You know, and I think that that actually came from from some of that stuff where you would have relied on each other a bit. It wasn't normal. It looked normal, but it wasn't. It wasn't easy. Yeah, and I think you and Izzy probably pulled together quite close under that because you, you think about things more than people give you credit for. Probably overthink when you don't need to. Everything. Everything. Yeah. You just overthink things. Like It could be the littlest thing and you'd overthink it. I think you're both very mentally strong. I think you've both got quite a, a level view of the world. I think Izzy's got a lot more common sense than you have. Um, yeah. If you don't do something or you don't go to the gym, why are you letting that affect you so much? Do you know what I mean? It's not that deep. Tomorrow's another day. You'll, you'll lose it completely over something and she'll go, Joe, just do this and she'll sort it, whereas you don't. You just go to the depths of despairs of, oh my God, it's not done right. It doesn't matter It doesn't matter anymore. No, I think you're both awesome. I think you went through rocky patches, both of you. You were angry. Yeah. Izzy's always angry. You know, and she's got claws as well, so that's quite dangerous. But actually, you know, very proud of both of you and the people that you've grown into. So I think we... We've done well. The three of us have done very well. Mm-hmm.